Hello friends, happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lena Gersa and all my non-made up on spring break <laughs> glory. Uh, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am so excited to share with you the adorable Rain or Shine Sweet collection from the Stampin' Up! Uh, January to April mini catalog. Now, I am on, as I mentioned, I'm on spring break, so oh natural, no makeup, just chilling at home, having fun in my studio with my cats who can't seem to understand that mom does need to work, um, and it's just been a great little break from the grind at school. So uh, you'll have to forgive me for not putting makeup on for you today, but I just needed a day. So here we are. We are all about this adorable sweet collection. And I got to say, even though I don't have young kids and I really don't have young kids to make cards for, the images and the characters in this suite are just too cute and they're perfect for anyone. Honestly, um, it's not just a kid focused suite. Of course, kids will love it, but it is not just a kid focused suite. So I had lots of fun playing with this one. Um, I've got some fun folds to share with you. I have a quick and relatively easy card um, made easy by the DSP and I'm going to show you a bunch more samples. So let's see who's here. I'm going to pull up my video here on my iPad and see who is joining me. Hi Kathy. Welcome. Hi Linda. Hi Krista. All right, so as I said, we are all about the rain or shine. I've been calling it playing in the rain because that's the name of the stamp set. But then <laughs> I was looking this morning in the catalog. I'm like, oh, it's called rain or shine. I don't know where that name came from. Because honestly, if the stamps are called playing in the rain, then the suite should be called playing in the rain. But anyway, uh, rain or shine is the name of the suite. Is it on page 50 and 51 in the catalog? I'm going to show you that in just a minute and show you all the products in the suite. And then we're going to get to it. Okay. Hi, Laura from Ohio. Welcome. So I'm going to flip the camera. We are going to get to it. Let's do the old flipperoo here. Oh, lamp's in the way. We will deal with that in just a sec. There we go. Okay. Oh, you're catching my little basket of goodies. I'm just going to slide this over just a smidge. There we go. That's better. All right, so here's the spread in the catalog. It gets two pages, as most sweets do. Um, adorable samples, just super cute um, products. So let me show them to you in real life here. So we've got the bundle called Playing in the Rain, hence my confusion in the name of the suite. Um, adorable little characters, some cute sentiments, and then of course the dies, the open dies that cut out all of the stamped images with the exception of the raindrops. And then we have some additional um, die cuts. We've got the bridge, we've got some grass and a stump and the flag and some bitty butterflies. So really, really cute um, bundle. But honestly, the star of this suite, I'm just going to move these aside and I'll talk about them in a minute, is the DSP. So if you are on a budget and you are someone who, you know, loves it but can't afford to get it all, if you need to narrow it down, get the DSP. You can do amazing things with just the paper. In fact, as I was playing with this suite, I actually had to force myself to use the stamps <laughs> because all of the images are in the DSP and it's so, so stinking cute. So let me show you the paper. It's 12 by 12. Um, it has um, a glossy finish on one side. So this is specialty DSP. I'm not sure how well that shows up. Um, oh yeah, you can see the shine on the, on the camera. So we've got the umbrellas. We've got some sort of dark, rainy background. We've got some cute little critters. Love these guys. We've got a lighter, rainy background. More adorable critters. This turtle is just my absolute fave. And then we've got a beautiful 12 by 12 scene. So I th think this would make a beautiful scrapbook layout. Um, or I was actually thinking, oh, how cute would this be to use as a background on a sampler? Lots of ideas in my, that run through my head. Not enough time to execute, <laughs> unfortunately. So here is the backside. So we go to more subdued patterns in Melon Mambo, not Melon Mambo, uh, Mango Melody and Flor de Flamingo. Look at how yummy that is. That, does that not just make you think of like sorbet? I want to use this pattern with the uh, share a milkshake suite that I use or bundle that I did last week. We've got some multicolored raindrops, cute little sort of distressed 
uh, pattern and then some flowers. So lots of bright patterns on the back, adorable little critters on the front and away we go. Now the other items in the suite, we have the raindrops embossing folder, uh, just a really subtle um, leaves raindrop pattern on your paper. And then these adorable loose daisy embellishments. Now these are currently not orderable. They're coming back in stock uh, I can't remember when, sometime in April. Um, these sold, I think, way better than they were anticipating. You get a ton of them. You get uh, 300 of them in a pack. So you're not going to need more than one of these unless you're making a lot of shaker cards. But you're going to see these in action today. So that is the suite. Uh, like I said, really super cute products. And you're going to see them in action. So let's get to it. Oh, very windy, Jean, is it? Yeah, it's windy here and it's bitterly cold. So the wind has uh, got a real Arctic bite to it today. <laughs> All right, so here is our first project. You can see I've used two different, um, the two different rain patterns on, uh, in the DSP. So I'm going to show you how to put this one together. I've done most of our stamping and die cutting and coloring ahead of time on this one, just in the interest of time. So we're going to start with a piece of four by five and a quarter inch DSP. This is that rain, the lighter rain pattern. And then I have two pieces of the darker pattern that I have die cut using the basic borders dies. There's a, a stitched cloud die in there. And uh, I just think it's fantastic because you can create the look of rain cloud. So we're going to layer those. So we'll start with this one. These started out as two inch strips, okay? And then I just die cut one edge on them. So we're just gonna put this on. I'm not too worried about getting it super straight. I just want my edges to line up here. And then we're gonna add this guy. And this one I'm gonna put flush with the top. So by layering those two die cuts, you get the look of, you know, lowering rain clouds. So there we go. All right, now we have a cute little bridge. I have cut this from basic gray cardstock. I've used some adhesive sheets on the back. So we're gonna stick that on, but not just yet. First, we're gonna color our cute little bunny. So this little bunny is so happy to be playing in the rain. And um, I decided he was gonna be a, a white bunny. So we're just gonna give him a little pink nose. I'm using dark Fleur de Flamingo here for the nose. And I'm going to use the light for the insides of the ears. Just a little hint of pink on the ears and then a little bit of blush on the cheek. Just like that, a little bit bigger. There we go. There's his little blushy cheek. Okay, now for the raincoat, yellow rain slicker is the way to go. So we are going to use our Daffodil Delight. So I'm going to color the whole thing first with my light. Daffodil Delight. Now that is the yellow that is in this suite. Um, there is also Mango Melody. Now sadly we don't have Mango Melody blends. We did once upon a time and then they were discontinued. I know, I cried. Um, I love the Mango Melody. It's such a nice fun orangey yellow. Uh, but the Daffodil Delight still works quite well with this suite. So I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow around the collar and under the arms. And just sort of along the bottom here. And then I'm going to bring in my light again and just blend that out. My voice is hoarse today. I'm not sure why. I haven't been talking. No teaching this week for me. Maybe it's because I had my team meeting last night. Too much talking last night. All right. There we go. There's our sweet little bunny in his yellow rain slicker. All right, so that is going to get glued onto our background. Now I just need to think about where I want my bridge to go because I want to make sure my bunny is standing on the bridge. We don't want him floating, right? I guess he could be jumping. <laughs> Probably not advisable when crossing a bridge. Um, but that's approximately where he's going to go. So we're going to add a little bit of glue to the back of our bunny. And we're going to slide him in here right about there. Look how happy he is. All right, then we can glue our bridge on. So I'm just going to peel the backing paper off. And I just want to make sure my bunny's foot is actually on the bridge because we don't want them floating. No levitating bunnies. This is not a horror movie. 
All right, there we go. And then I have some rain puddles. Now, I have two that were stamped and die cut. Where's my other one? Oh, there they are. So these two little guys are a stamp and a die, okay? This one was actually the bottom part of my bunny. So when we stamp our bunny, let me show you the stamp image in the stamp set. So when you stamp your bunny, he's, he's splashing in a rain puddle. However, the die cuts only the bunny, okay? So if you want um, the rain puddle, you're going to have to fussy cut that. So I would suggest partial die cut and then fussy cut the bottom if you want to have the, the puddle and the bunny stay together. However, this, for this one, I decided to use my puddle as water under my bridge. So we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of glue here. So I'm just going to let the part that is kind of cut out where his foot was hang off the edge. We'll trim that off in a minute. And add a little bit of glue to these guys. I colored these puddles with my uh, Balmy Blue blends, both light and dark. Um, all of my images on this card are stamped in basic gray. Okay, basic gray does work with the Stampin' Blends. And I find it's just a little bit softer um, than, the, than the Black Memento. There we go. There are our puddles. And we're going to flip this over and trim off the overhang here. Just clean that up. There we go. Oh, you got the Mango Melody Blends, did you, Jean? That's good. Yeah. They are, well, they're hard to come by now. Can't get them anymore. All right. Now, for my sentiment, um, I stamped and heat embossed uh, the Rainy Days Are Better With You sentiment in white. And then I'm going to use my Cloud Punch to punch it out. And conveniently, it fits just perfectly inside the cloud. So I thought, how cute would it be to have our sentiment be on the rain cloud? So we're going to add these little clouds. These were stamped and colored using uh, my Smoky Slate blends. So we're going to go ahead and glue these on. So we'll put this guy over here. He's going to kind of be hanging off the edge. This is going to come on here. We're going to add this little guy. I'm actually going to put a bit of seal on the side of this right here. So this little guy is going to be kind of tucked in behind and he's actually going to get popped up along with this cloud, just like that. So we'll go ahead and pop him up. Oh, thanks, Jean. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, basic gray. I use basic gray way more than I use black. Um, I don't know. I just like the softness of it. Um, it's just a little bit, a little bit less harsh than the black, a little bit less stark. All right, so we're going to pop our little rain cloud on there. And then we have one more little bitty cloud. It's going to go over to the left here a little bit, just like that. Okay, now we're ready to put this onto our card base. So I had to bring in a Daffodil Delight. I don't often use this bright a color for my card base, but I couldn't resist. We had to match the rain slicker. So this is four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored in the middle at five and a half. So we'll just fold that along our score line and add a little bit of adhesive to the back of our panel here. Oh, hi, Cheryl. How are you? Thanks for joining me today. Oh, forgot to trim off the edge of my cloud. Look at that. I got to trim that little bit off there before we stick that down. All right. Oh, almost put it on upside down, you guys. There we go almost happens. Okay. Our last little touch. Did I bring over my sequins? Yes, I did. We're going to add a couple of these little blue sequins. These are the, um, pastel adhesive, self adhesive sequins from the mini also known as my favorite embellishment of all time because I can't stop using them. They just work so well on everything. <laughs> there we go. Add a couple of little shimmery sparkly blingy raindrops to the mix okay so there we go super cute easy um adorable card for you all right so let's move on to number two so number two is this one now this turtle just oh he i he melts my heart i absolutely love this little guy and I thought it would be perfect with this little daisy as a thank you. So I decided to make a little easel card that stands up like this so that he can be standing on my desk with a, a cute little thank you message. So we're going to put this one together. Another really easy fun fold. I'm going to show you 
how to do it. I'm going to bring in my trimmer here. So we start with just a regular five and a half by eight and a half um, card base. Okay. Um, so this is Okay, yes, Penny, the, the dies are currently on back order. They're due in um, by the end of the month. So the dies are on back order. But I'm telling you right now, um, hold off on ordering ordering the dies. Just get the DSP for now, and you can do amazing things if you are okay with fussy cutting. <laughs> All right, so as I was saying, this is a balmy blue piece of cardstock, five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. Okay, so I'm going to put it in my trimmer. And I'm going to, I'm using my right side. Um, can you see that? Let me move this down a little bit. I'm using my right side um, ruler here. And I'm going to cut from the top down to the four and a quarter mark, which is where my score line is. Okay, so I'm, I've lined it up at one and a quarter. And I'm going to cut, let me just double check to make sure that is one and a quarter. Yes, it is. I was second guessing myself there for a second because I was talking so much. Why does that not feel like one and a quarter? Oh, it is. Okay, I need to stop talking and I can't talk and cut at the same time. Bad things happen. <laughs> there we go. Four and a quarter. Okay, then I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to come down and use my bottom ruler because I can. And again, lining it up at the one and a quarter inch mark. And I'm going to cut up from the bottom to the score line. So we're going to go up to there. Okay, so that gives me my card base. That's all there is to it. It's a really, really easy fun fold. Now, before I put this away, uh, we need to do a little bit of scoring. But first, we're going to fold these little flaps inwards so that they're out of the way. So that when we go to do our scoring, we don't have to worry about accidentally scoring these flaps. So we're just going to fold them over. Okay, now I'm going to put this in and I'm going to line up the fold. Let me put this in the fold on my card at two and one eighths inches. So this is where my fold is, that's my score line. And then I'm gonna score this little middle flap. Okay, so I'm scoring at two and one eighth. Okay, so I have my score line and I have my flaps. That's all there is to creating this card base. Really, really simple. All right, so now we can go ahead and fold this the rest of the way. We'll fold our center panel. And we're going to fold this little center, this little extra score line that we added under. So you can see how that's going to form our easel. Okay. So to start, we're going to go ahead and glue these flaps down. Now I'm just going to pull them so that they're nice and flush at the bottom. So we're just going to add a little bit of seal to these flaps. And fold that over. Okay. And then another one here. Oopsie, didn't mean to get seal on there. We can get rid of that. The nice thing about seal is when you get it where you don't want it, you just take your finger and you rub it off and it goes away. And another reason why I love this adhesive. All right, so that's gonna form our card base. Now we're going to add a little bit of DSP to our side flaps. So I have here two little strips. These are each one, one by four. Okay, so they're gonna get glued on our side flaps just like that. So we'll go ahead and add a little bit of glue here. Center that on the left one. And then a little bit more. Yeah, Laura, you don't have to wait too long though for them to come back in stock. The estimated date of arrival is the last week of March. So just a week and a bit. Okay, so there we go. We're going to set this aside for a few minutes and we're going to work on our focal image. So our focal image starts, it's built on this new die cut. So this is from the new online exclusives. They're called Radiating Stitches Dies. And oh my goodness, they're fantastic. So we have all different size rectangles. We also have some, some hearts and some circles um, with this sort of, well, stitch detail that goes outwards rather than parallel to the edges. And it just creates this fun little frame effect. So we are going to add a piece of DSP to the center of that to create our background. Now this piece is cut to two and a quarter by three and five eighths, and it's going to fit just perfectly inside my frame there. So we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of glue 
and stick that down. Get that centered just so. Okay. And then that is going, actually, let's add our turtle first. Look how cute this little guy is. Now, this, there, this can be cut with the dies or you can use your <laughs> scissors. In fact, when I first um, pulled this out, I pulled out this paper, I had forgotten that I had ordered the bundle and uh, went ahead and did a whole bunch of fussy cutting of a whole bunch of these little critters because they're so cute. And then after the fact, realized that, oh, I had the dies. I could have used the dies. But honestly, they are not bad to fussy cut at all. So we're going to add a couple of dimensionals to the back of our little turtle here, and he's going to get glued just sort of hanging off the right side of our background here. Just like that. Look how cute he is. Oh, can't stand it. All right. Now he is going to get glued centered on this center panel. Okay, now here's the thing. We want to make sure we only put glue on the bottom section, right? So that our easel will stand up. So we're going to do that. We're going to add a little bit of liquid glue to this bottom section. We're going to go ahead and center our little turtle. And I'm just kind of lining up the top and bottom edges of my white frame with my DSP that I've already glued down. Okay, and that gives me my sweet little easel. Isn't that cute? How easy is that? All right, now to, to um, add our thanks. So this is cut using the, what's it called? Amazing thanks dies. Um, and I put the background from Balmy Blue and the detailed, the finer one from Basic White. I've used adhesive sheets on the back. And I honestly, I would never use these dies without adhesive sheets. They're just so much easier to use um, rather than using liquid glue. So I like to start from one end and just gradually work my way across, centering my die cut as I go, because they do get stretched a little bit as you're pulling off the backing on the adhesive. So you just want to make sure that it gets kind of put back into shape as you work your way across. And there we go. Isn't that cute? I love this die. So that is going to go on across the top of our card. So I'm going to put some mini dimensionals just sort of on the middle letters because I want it to pop. So I'm going to put one there, one there. I'll put one down here and maybe I'll put one more. One right there. Okay. So just on the middle letters, because the other et letters are going to hang off the edge, okay? And we don't want to stick our card down. So we're going to peel off our backings. <laughs> I got you hooked on adhesive sheets. They are a must-have. Honestly, I rarely use, well, I never use detailed dies without them. They're just uh, one of those things that make life much easier. All right. So we're going to add some of these adorable little daisy embellishments. Now the easiest way to maneuver these is to use the blue goo end of your take your pick to pop them into place. So I'm just going to take some liquid glue and I'm just going to add a little dab of glue wherever I want to put a daisy. So we're going to put one here and one here and one up here. Okay. And then I'm just, I'm using the yellow daisy. So I'm just going to take and pick it up with my blue goo end and then plop it into place and give it time to set before you manipulate it too much. I have to think about which direction I want my leaf to go. And there we go. Isn't that cute? I love the, that little addition of those daisies. All right. So now we're going to let that dry for a sec and work on our inside panel. So on the inside, we're going to just stamp some daisies and do a little bit of coloring. So I have my daisy stamp here. I am using black just because my turtle is black. The outline on my turtle is black. So I decided to use the black um, to stamp my daisies. So we're just going to stamp them across the bottom edge of our white panel here. Now I should mention the width of this is two and three quarters by four. Okay. Um, I will put all of the measurements in the video description when I am done. So you have them. And we are going to color the centers of our daisies with our dark daffodil delight. Because I want them to match my little daisy that the turtle's holding there. 
So quickest and easiest coloring job ever. Make them white daisies and just add a yellow center. <laughs> and then we're going to color the leaves with light old olive. So just a quick little brush. We'll color the leaves. These are really teeny tiny images. So it doesn't take much to color them. We'll just kind of work our way across here. There we go. Okay, now that is going to get glued centered on this inside section. Okay, so we'll go ahead and stick that down. And again, we just want to make sure it's straight and lined up at the bottom with our DSP panels. Okay, and then we need something to catch our easel so it stays standing. So I decided to use some little clouds. These are actually cut from this same piece of DSP, that big 12 by 12. I'll show you this piece here. Okay, and this die actually cuts out the clouds. You gotta love it, right? When Stampin' Up! does that kind of stuff. I love the way they coordinate things for us. All right, so I actually used three clouds on my sample, but I only cut two. So we're getting two. Two clouds today rather than three. Now, it's important, though, that we pop our clouds up because they have to catch our easel. If it's glued flat, the easel will not catch and your card will not stay standing up. So I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of my cloud. So I'm going to stand up my easel kind of where I want it to go and then stick my cloud down so that it, it catches the bottom of my easel there. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So another dimensional and I'm going to put a mini as well. Except I'm just getting the backing rather than the whole mini. There we go. And again, I'm just going to stand this up and I just want to hold it so that it is straight so that when I stick my cloud down, my easel is going to stand up straight. And there we go. Isn't that cute? And the cute thing too is that the clouds kind of peek out from behind the thanks, which I thought was kind of cute when the card is closed. All right. Hi, Pam from North Carolina. How are you? Hope you are well. All right, so there is number two. All right, now number three, I think is my very favorite card I've made in a really long time just because it's so stinking cute. So here we go. This doesn't look like much on the outside. It's just a cute little hello friend card, okay? Where the wow is is when we open it up. So first of all, these circles kind of interlock. So when we open it up, we get this. So it's like a, an M fold, but my little, this little guy, my dancing in the puddle bunny pops out. Okay, so you end up here, I'll put it this way. So that's kind of what it looks like when it is standing up. You get this little rainy day scene. Okay, on the back there is space to write a greeting. Okay, I should mention that this is not, um, you know, a card where you're just, you're just making a home decor piece. There's actually a spot to uh, write a greeting, but how cute is that? So let me show you how to do it. It is so much easier than you may think. All right, so here we go. Lots of little bits and pieces, only because I cut a whole bunch of bits out of the DSP. So all of my characters and everything are cut from the DSP. The only stamping on this card is the sentiments, okay? All right, so let's start with our card base. So this starts out just as a regular four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of smoky slate, okay? I also have scored once at five and a half, just like I would for any other card base. All right, then I've added an extra score line. So here's the front. So let me fold this first. This is what a regular card base would look like, right? There's a regular card, right? So I've got these extra score lines. So I'm going to fold upwards on both sides. So I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this. Okay, and that's going to give me my W or M as the case may be, okay? All right, so far so good. Now, I have a whole bunch of pieces of this fabulous DSP. There's actually six pieces. Now, if you don't want to use the same pattern all the way across, you don't have to. Um, I actually debated using a different pattern on the front, but I just love this, this rain pattern so much that I decided, nope, we're gonna be consistent all the way across, okay? So these are each cut to two and five eighths by four and one eighth, I believe. Yes. Now, if you are wanting to conserve DSP a little bit uh, or make it stretch, you can cut these to uh, two and a half by four. You'll just have a slightly larger border 
on each panel, okay? All right, so we're gonna start working our way across here. And I just wanna make sure my raindrops are all going downwards. <laughs> we don't have upwards falling rain. Um, so we're gonna start gluing our pieces on. So we're gonna do this one first. And stick this down. Get nice even borders all the way around. Okay, now we're gonna skip the two middle ones for a minute and we're going to do the right hand one. You'll see why I'm skipping these ones in a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this one down. Oh, I almost put my, nope, that was right side up. Whew. Sometimes it's hard to tell with some of these raindrops. Get that on straight. Okay, now our two middle panels, we need to wait a second to put them on because we have to add our little tabs to attach our bunny and our little banner. Okay, so I have here, I should have four of them. Where's the other two? There they are. I have four little tabs that are um, half inch wide by one inch long. So I'm just going to take and fold each of them in half. Okay, I thought about scoring, but you know what? They don't have to be perfectly in half and it doesn't have to be pretty because nobody's going to see it. So we're just going to fold these little guys in half. Three and one more. Okay, so there's my four little taps. I'm going to set this out of the way for a sec. And I'm going to bring in to the two panels that are going to go in this middle section on my card. Okay, so what I want to do is have them lined up so that they're flush top and bottom. I'm going to think about where I'm going to want my bunny to be stuck. So we're going to have a bunny and we're going to have a banner. All right, so we need two tabs for our bunny and two tabs for our banner. So if my bunny is going to go right about here, then I want my tabs to go right about there. So I'm going to take and put a little bit of liquid glue on the inside of one of these tabs. I'm just gonna slide it in under and I'm just gonna fold that over so that it adheres. So I have, see how I have it standing up? It's stuck to the back side, okay? So that's going to hold my little bunny, okay? And then wherever I want my banner, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to, let's get this out of the way for a sec. My banner's gonna go about there. So I'm gonna put my tab, a little bit of glue, slide my little tab under, and we're just gonna tuck that in there and stick it down. Okay, so there are my two tabs for my left side of my, my middle section. And then I'm just going to glue the other ones going the opposite direction. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue. I'm going to slide this in and I can Slide it up or down as necessary in a second so that they line up. So you just wanna make sure that your tabs line up. They don't have to be perfect, but you want them to be close, okay? And then same thing down here. Pop this one on and then slide it as necessary. Oh, that one's actually pretty good. Okay, so now we have our little pop-out tabs. All right, once those are on, then it's just a matter of gluing these on our inside panel. So this one's gonna go here. So we'll add a little bit of glue and stick it down. Again, just taking the time to line up our top and bottom edges so it's nice and flush. Okay, and then our last one. Oh, Jean, thank you. I love this card. I just had so much fun, I couldn't stop. Um, I originally just had the bunny and then I decided the bunny needed friends and then he needed flowers and he needed grass. And yeah, I just kept going <laughs> with this one. It was really fun to play with. Okay, so that is our card base, okay? Now it's just a matter of adding all of our bits and pieces. So we're gonna add our bunny first. Now you're gonna see, to see how my bunny is, you can actually see a little bit of those tabs. So we can just trim those a little. Um, I just found it easier to work with a one inch piece and then you trim them down as necessary. You don't need a ton of glue um, to hold this little guy, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and stick him on. So I'm putting a bit of glue on my tabs. We're gonna pop that on. You just kinda wanna make sure your, your puddle is parallel to the bottom of the card. 
because uh, you know water tends to run flat <laughs> and we're gonna add our banner once we stamp okay now I have all kinds of little bits and bobs here uh, that we're going to add to decorate around our bunny so these little flowers again were die cut from the DSP we're going to oh I forgot to add my grass to my bunny so we're gonna do that now so I'm just gonna add a bit of glue and tuck it in underneath my puddle here so there's one whoopsie stay put there he is and we'll add another one on the other side uh, oh you know what I did these the wrong direction oh well there's two different grass so these ones go they kind of lean to the right and these ones lean to the left I put a right a left leaning one on the right side but that's okay doesn't matter grass grows any which way right all right so we're gonna add this guy in behind here should have done this before. This would be much, would have been much easier. I was too eager to glue my bunny down. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to take and add some grass to the back of our flowers here. So we'll add a little bit of grass here. And come on, stick. And a little bit of grass on the other side. Come here, you. My fingernails are all chopped off because I'm playing I'm teaching guitar this semester so I have no nails right now on my right my left hand and uh, it makes it a little bit of a challenge to pick things up just tidy that up we're gonna stick this one on so we'll pop this on kind of in behind our bunny just like that and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side so we'll add a bit of glue and a bit of grass and a bit more grass. So we'll stay stuck grass. This would be easier to do with glue dots. I just don't want to wrestle with my roll of glue dots right now. Stick these guys on and then a little bit more adhesive to stick them onto the other side of our bunny. Just like that. Okay, and then we have some more little critters. You just stay put right there. Let's trim that bit peeking out at, off. Come on. There we go. Okay. All right, now we're going to add our other little critters on either side. So we're gonna add some more grass or sorry some more flowers rather so just a little smidge of glue and we'll stick one flower over here and we're going to pop mr fox up so we'll add a couple of dimensionals and stick mr fox on Just make sure that his tail isn't hanging off the edge because that will interfere with our card closing. Okay, and then on this side, another little patch of flowers. And this happy little puppy dog. Yeah, the grass is blowing in the wind. You're right, Deb. <laughs> Except not all the grass is blowing in the same direction. The wind is confused today. The grass is confused today. There we go. Okay. So there are characters. Now we need to stamp our banner. So I have here a die cut banner and we're going to use the rainy days are better with you sentiment. So we'll ink that up and this fits just perfectly on this little banner. This banner is from the um, Silas shapes dies. So that's like it was made for it. And then again, we're just going to add a little bit of glue to our two tabs here and add our banner, hopefully straight and hopefully relatively centered. Okay. And there we go. Isn't that cute? The way that pops out. I love it. All right. So now we're going to close it up. It does close flat, which is awesome. We're going to add our last two pieces of DSP to the front panels. one 
and two. Okay, and then to decorate the front, I have some circles. So I had to mention the fact that we have circle punches back. Um, now they're currently, I think, out of stock, but they are going to be back. Um, we have the two inch and the one and three quarter inch circle punches back um, in our um, offering. So I punched my little piggy, my worried looking little piggy, using the one and three quarter inch circle punch. Sorry, no, I used it at uh, the two inch circle punch and then I die cut a two and a quarter inch circle to, to mat him. And then this one is punched with the one and three quarter inch circle and then I'm matting it on a two inch. Okay, and the same thing goes for, the, oh yeah, same thing goes for the clouds. For a minute there, I thought I had done a little boo-boo, but no, we're good. Got an extra banner here. All right, now when we go to stick these on, we need to think about the fact that we want our card to close and interlock. So it's designed to interlock, which holds our card closed, okay? Um, I thought about putting a belly band on, but that makes them really hard to mail, and this one actually mail will mail better than if I'd added a belly band, okay? But it does hold it shut. So to do that, we're going to glue our little piggy. I used a turtle on here, but we're using a piggy this time. And we're going to have our umbrella that's going to overlap our opening and then our clouds are going to overlap our opening. So when we go to glue these on, our piggy and our umbrella are going to be glued flat. Okay, so we're going to do our piggy first and we're only putting glue on half of our circle. Okay, so we're going to put him on right about there. Okay, this umbrella is going to slide underneath like this. Okay, so again, I'm going to put glue just on this half of my circle. We're going to tuck it underneath so that it overlaps the center. Okay, and then this one with the clouds is actually going to pop up and that's going to hold our card shut. Okay, so it's going to pop. So our piggy, actually, did I do that right? Yes, I did. Um, our, you see how our piggy's going to tuck in behind. Okay. So that's going to pop up there. So I'm going to add a couple of dimensionals where I want my circle to go. And then we're going to layer that just like that. Okay. And you see how that interlocks to hold the card shut when we open it. It opens like that and then this will tuck in like that okay all right now oh I forgot to add my little flowers to my banner on the inside that's okay um, I've already stamped and die cut my sentiment this little sentiment is from one of the host sets I believe in the annual um, it's the one with all the pets on the chairs I can't remember the name of the set right now off the top of my head sit stay relax maybe that's what I want to say um, so I'm going to add a little bit of Baker's, of uh, uh, basic gray Baker's twine. This is retired. Yes, I'm using retired product only because I had to use Baker's twine and this was the perfect color. So there you go. Sometimes I even use retired products. Not very often, but this was the perfect color for this. So there we go. And then we're going to add tie a little bow with our twine. And add it just to the top edge of our banner here. You want your bow to be fairly small. If it's too big, it's going to catch as you are opening and closing your card, which makes it a little bit of a nuisance. So I'm just going to take a glue dot. And what I like to do when I have a single bow like this, I take and cut my glue dot in half. Okay. And then I take and I roll what's a half a glue dot into a glue booger. I'm going to press it onto my banner where I want my knot or my bow to go and then press the knot of my bow into the glue dot. Okay. And then we're going to add this just with the dimensional. I'm not going to cover up my piggy. I'm going to put it a little bit, a little bit lower than I did on my sample. And I think I'm going to use a couple of minis here. So we'll put one and two, get rid of our backings and pop that on right about there. 
Okay. Just make sure it still opens. <laughs> make sure we didn't glue anything shut. Okay. And then we're going to add a couple more little blue sequins because, you know, rain is better when it's sparkly, right? Right. So we'll tuck one in there. Whoops. Stick. And one down here. And one up here. There we go. Cute little surprise pop out card. Now this little flower was supposed to go, I'll show you on my sample. I added some extra flowers there. I didn't do that on this one, but that's okay. All right, so there we go. One, two, and three cute, cute, cute cards with the playing in the rain suite. No, rain or shine suite from the Stampin' Up! catalog. Now let me show you a couple more ideas. Um, like I said, I had lots of fun with this suite. So here is a cute, happy little bunny flying a kite. The kite dies are really fun to play with. Um, so there's your kite. This one cuts the overlay. Okay. In case you're wondering what the heck that die is, like I did, it's the overlay for your kite. And then these are your little bows on your kite. Okay. So there's that guy. This one I posted yesterday. Oh, happy day. This one is one I made actually during celebration with um, one of the celebration stamp sets. Some days are harder than others. You've got this. I think that sentiment works really well with those images. And then here is a fun fold that we did in my team meeting last night. So one of um, the gals from my stamping symphony led our mystery fun fold make and take. And this one opens like this. How cool is that? Such a neat fun fold. So I haven't finished decorating the inside, but I just thought that was super cute. So there is another fun fold idea. Here is a SWAT card I received, similar to my easel card, but without the easel part. This is one that I demonstrated during my live launch party way back in January. Fun one. And then here is a shaker card made using the kite die and some of the little daisy embellishments as shaker filler. So there you go. Tons of ideas with the Rain or Shine Suite from the Stampin' Up! catalog. Do you like these? <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, look at how cock out I am. I have certainly wandered off center here. I apologize for that. I should look at my iPad more often. Thanks for joining me, ladies, on my March break. I will see you next week when I'm back at work for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.